Welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're talking about what's new in Reaper 6.67 with the exciting new feature of retroactive MIDI recording. Let's check it out. First up on the change log, virtual MIDI keyboard, highlight notes being played by armed track inputs. For MIDI, add actions to insert retroactively recorded MIDI. So you can find the virtual MIDI keyboard from the view menu, and this allows you to use your typing keyboard as a MIDI input. And you can see here, if I press Z, X, and C, those keys are lighting up, and also I can press the keys on my actual keyboard. So that indicator lights up either way, which is a nice improvement, uh, especially for tutorial makers like me. So the other great new feature related to MIDI is retroactive MIDI recording. So we're gonna find this in the action list. It's not a preference, it's not a track option. This is under the action list. We're gonna search for retroactive. And we have five new functions here. Clear retroactive MIDI history, insert all available retroactively recorded MIDI for armed and selected tracks, Insert all available retroactively recorded MIDI for armed tracks. Insert recent retroactively recorded MIDI for armed and selected tracks. Insert recent retroactively recorded MIDI for armed tracks. I don't know the specific definition of what recent would be in this context, but I think it's since last playback. And then there's also the variations of armed tracks and selected tracks. So you can have multiple tracks armed, but if you only want to import from a single track or a few of many armed tracks, you can do that just with those different options, armed and selected or just armed. Insert recent retroactively recorded MIDI for armed tracks. I'll hit run. And that puts in everything that I've played today from the MIDI keyboard, the virtual MIDI keyboard, or from my actual keyboard. And so that's put that in at the start of the session because that's where the play cursor was. So if I play a few more things, so I'll go up an octave. Not a great performance, but let's see what that does when we import that. And so that's put that um, after the previous area that was recorded because that's where the edit cursor was started. So if I put my edit cursor back to the beginning and play something, and then import that, that's going to put those in there. So Reaper's always monitoring and capturing your MIDI, even if you're not in record mode. As long as the tracks are armed and they have a MIDI input, it's capturing that data. And so if you're just playing around, you never lose an idea. So what if we want to clear that buffer? We've got this action clear retroactive MIDI history. So I'm going to run that. I'm going to uh, delete all the items on the track. Let's go back to the start and let's do some, I'll just do a quick thing here and then run this action to um, insert all available retroactively recorded MIDI for ARM tracks. And so that's put that in there. To make this easier to use, it makes sense to add this to keyboard shortcuts. So let's do a Shift F8 to clear and for insert recent, I'm going to add F8. And of course, if you prefer those other actions there, if they're more useful for you, then uh, go ahead and use those. So I'm going to do F8 and Shift F8 to clear. So this also works in in playback mode. So if I was uh, if I had the metronome going here. Oh, and I forgot to hit record, so I'll just press this button, and then there's that original performance again. And uh, what happens if we press this multiple times? It actually puts it on top. So you don't see it here yet, but if we go to Options and Offset Overlapping Media Items Vertically, that's going to show you the two items here, like that. They look the same because the MIDI notes are the same. But yeah, you can repeatedly put those items in there on top of each other. Not useful, really. With this action, the most recent one, it's going to use the original timing reference. 
So it's always going to go back to bar 13 in this case because that's the starting point. If I put that in, that's everything since I last um, pasted in. So, and it's going to be starting from that point. So that's the basics of retroactive MIDI recording in Reaper. Never lose an idea. It's always capturing that MIDI input as long as the tracks are record armed. The performance meter got an update. Add option to show effects CPU as worst block for diagnosing problematic real-time plugins. Display track media CPU use includes resampling, take effects, time stretch, etc. So I've got the performance meter showing here. And if I right click, I get the menu and I can select this new option, display CPU utilization as 1.0 exclamation point equals longest block is real time worst case. It's a weird name for this feature, but essentially it's just going to show the, the worst kind of performance um, for that track. And it may be easier to diagnose certain issues. Previously, it was very difficult to diagnose issues on item effects versus track effects um, because the item effects would only run for a certain period of time when the cursor was nearby that sort of thing so sometimes if you had an issue of overload you know maybe it's the track effects maybe it's the item effects now in here we've got this media number and because i'm stopped and it's been several uh, it's been about a minute since i last played back none of the effects on the items are active right now and you can see that here in the effects chain. I just loaded up this item with a bunch of, of effects on it just to show something here for this number. And I'll play that back now. So that item takes about 1.3% CPU. And you can see that here. As the track plays back, there's going to be an increased CPU load um, when this item is playing back because it's got this effects chain on it. And the performance meter will reflect that uh, as kind of a separate category for media. If I take away these effects, that should lower the overall CPU use. These changes are really not that important for most users. Moving on, Project Bay. Add option to disable grouping similar effects in effects tab. Add option to show track numbers in track column. Add performance column to effects tab. Display idle status for effects when applicable. Reserve selection when changing effects online bypass and presets. And default new folders to expanded. So we're gonna head over to the view menu again and go to Project Media Effects Bay. And a bunch of these changes are on the effects tab. If we right click in an empty area, we've got some options here, group similar effects into single items. So if I uncheck that, now each effect is a separate instance or, or item in this list. And I can make adjustments rather than um, having them grouped all together with different presets and, and things like that. So that's a pretty big difference. If we go to, back to group similar, um, I only see that I have one compressor three in this project. And if I ungroup, then I can see each one of these individually and I can modify them individually. Uh, I can bypass, I can set this one offline. And then some of these tracks with re-EQ, I've got presets that I can change here. So I can change um, to, you know, here's the, the symbols preset. Doing that, I didn't have to change all of those uh, instances of the same effect across all the tracks to change a preset. So that's pretty useful. If we right click here, we've got a performance option. And so this gives us some information about CPU load for each of these effects instances, or if grouping is on, then um, all of those effects together. And then here's that last option, display track index in track column. And so now I've got the track number there. I'm sorted by performance, but I can sort by track here. And if I could turn off grouping, when inserting a new folder under the source media tab, right click, create new folder, 
that it will default to being an open folder. So if I grab all of these, uh, let's say all, all my drums and percussion samples here, if I drag all of these into the folder, the folder will stay open rather than being hidden automatically. Up next, project metadata. Support sorting metadata list by category. So this is pretty quick. We get to this window, project render metadata through the render window. Just check this box for metadata and then click on the metadata button to bring up this window. And now any of these columns can be sorted. So we can sort by category, by description, by value, by uh, which, which scheme is supported. Super simple, you may have already assumed that it worked like that. So it's good that it does. For the region manager, add option to add remove child tracks to render list when adding or removing parent. Option to display track dropdown list nested by folder is disabled by default. Support sorting by info column. When not displaying track dropdown list nested by folder, indent tracks in folders. Region marker manager, again, we find this in the view menu. And basically this allows us to make selections for markers and regions to render we can also rename things here so i can just double click in this area and this will be uh, first verse i can press tab and go to the next one and then you can use those names for rendering if we use this column here render track list we can select which tracks get rendered when we're using the render bounds in the render window instead of master mix we're using the uh, region render matrix or all project regions anyway so that's what this thing is for. And the new changes are when we right click in an empty area, we've got this option, add or remove child tracks to render list when adding and removing folder parent, show track render dropdown list nested by folders. So uh, this will be off by default. And this is what the list looks like, just a flat list. Things are indented if they are in folders. If I wanna render a stem of my kick, I can select that. And I can have more than one selection, so I can also render my, my snare, and it'll change that display to, say, two tracks. Let's also do the hat and the symbols. Now, if I change this to show track render dropdown list nested by folders, it looks a little different. So we've got under drum bus, those four tracks, percussion, these six tracks, and then the... Uh, other top level tracks are there. If I do all tracks and then check this box for add remove child tracks to render list when adding and remove folder parent, let's try this. So instead of on all tracks, let's uncheck the drum bus and that also removed the four individual tracks. I'm showing you that again, there's the stem for the percussion or the folder track and then each individual track if i uncheck the percussion track then all of those tracks individually will also not be rendered and if i check that box there that brings them all back so that can be a quick shortcut you could always turn this option on and off at will so yeah if i choose um, uncheck percussion that will just remove the percussion when that option is off and we can also sort our list by the info column. So that'll say project markers or project region. This can also display take markers. For the region render matrix, support forcing individual track region combinations to mono stereo multi-channel render by right-clicking in region render matrix. Support selecting regions for rendering selected regions via click on region number or context menu. Simplify context menu and in the routing grouping matrix, improve appearance of folder expand collapse icons. So again, view menu, and we're looking for the routing matrix or the grouping matrix or the region render matrix. Um, they've changed the appearance of the folder icons here. So very simple plus minus buttons. That's also in the grouping matrix. So we can show and hide those. And actually they, they follow the, the project, which is nice. And in the region render matrix, we can take our drum bus here, right click. We can force a mono, force a stereo, or force multi-channel render for this track.
So doing it for track will do all regions. And if I do, let's say, the hi-hat within a region area for just this region. Or force it for just this track. So instead of just being the on-off with the white rectangle, we can right-click, force it to mono for this region, or for this track, or this track for this region, force it to stereo, or force it to multi-channel, uh, and even choose, let's say, 45 tracks, and there you go. It'll have a, a little plus there. Pretty neat. So we can also click on a region here, and you see that the icon changes from the circle um, or octagon um, to a square. The region render matrix and the region manager are kind of similar ways to do the same things. Both of these allow you to select tracks within regions and choose what gets rendered uh, in the render window. They're essentially doing the same thing, showing you the same information in different ways. You might prefer one over the other. And one last thing before we go, batch converter, add dropdown to choose how many CPU cores to use. Actually, this is not in the view menu. This is under the file menu, batch file item converter. And in here, there's this use CPU cores all, or you can select a, you know, from the number of CPU cores that you have on your system. You can't really make this faster, but you can make it slower if you want to multitask, do other CPU intense things. So we can limit this to, let's say four CPU cores, and it'll just process a little bit slower. So that's it for what's new in Reaper 6.67. And if you missed any of the previous videos in the series, I've go all the way back to Reaper 5.0. And uh, there's so many videos there, so many hours of content to watch and you will learn a ton. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.